Welcome back. Today we are going to build the support wall for the stairwell pocket, finish the carrying beam, and start raising the joists in the other section of the house. This section of the house will be a little bit different than the last one I did. Uh, this is because in this section we have a stairwell that will actually interrupt the carrying beam from going um, all the way from foundation to foundation. So in order to address that, uh, I need to build the support wall for the stairwell pocket, and that will actually catch the end of the carrying beam, as well as defining where the stairwell pocket will be. So this is the before picture. You can see the carrying beam on the left side carries all the way across from the foundation to foundation, and on the right side, we'll have a hole in that subfloor system in order to accommodate the stairwell. So today I discovered another species of interest around the property. Looks like we have carpenter bees. Uh, I didn't notice this initially. So these are untreated two by six boards that have been on site for maybe 10 days. And originally I thought it was just the milling, but no, these are absolutely carpenter bees. And some of these holes go, go really deep. Um, you can see this is where they nest and they lay their eggs. This is what they look like if you're interested. They are not bumblebees, as you can see here, and they have the ability to carve out an exact one half inch hole, and this is how I know. So I'll keep an eye on that, but I am absolutely not below turning the building of this house into a Tom and Jerry cartoon if it comes to it. So now I'm just building the support wall that will catch the end of the carrying beam and define the edge of the stairwell pocket. I took some string measurements and also put up my wall jig that I used for the other section in order to confirm heights and then just subtracted four and a half inches for the single bottom plate and the double top plate at the top in order to get the links for the studs and cut all of those. Uh, I'll additionally be putting sandwiching about four or five of these studs together directly beneath where the carrying beam is to add additional support. And now I'm going to get ready to raise the wall. I used string lines, which you can see just a little bit uh, at the top, and also the wall jig to confirm not only the height, but the location. I have some crosshairs on the cement floor where the corners of this wall will go, and ultimately I will build a butt wall to this uh, to finish the stairwell pocket, which will add additional stability. I put on this brace uh, just to keep the stud straight. I should have done this while it was on the ground. Uh, next time I will, I'll just put it on the backside so that it's uh, braced when I raise it. Now I'm just going to drill into the concrete and put in the same strike anchors that I've used in the foundation. I'll put in two for now, and then once I'm confident with everything, I'll, I'll add the remaining. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap uh, on this side of the top plate because I'm going to use a section to overlap to the butt wall uh, that will go around uh, the stairwell pocket, and that'll just add additional support as well. I'm not going to go through all of the carrying beam build part because I did that on a previous video, but it's very much the same. It just felt a little bit more complicated over here because I was having to build the wall and have the beam come to a certain point. And as I am now, uh, having a matching joist that will run straight across the room and define the area of the stair pocket. You can kind of think of it like a rim joist uh, on the other side of the house. It behaves similarly. It wasn't bad. It just it, it took a little bit more time to kind of figure out where I wanted to get started uh, and how I wanted it all to come together. But once it got up, everything was really solid. I did spend a little bit more time on the centering of the beam for the same reason on the other side, so that the joists uh, would be about the same length on both sides of the building. Here I'm just strapping this wall. It's about a quarter inch out of plumb, uh, and when I'm securing the carrying beam and defining the final uh, distance, uh, the final measurement, I want to be absolutely sure this wall is plumb, and strapping is a great way to do this because the wall will almost always naturally lean one way or the other, uh, and with these straps you can get really good granularity into uh, and tension wherever you want that wall to be. Now that the carrying beam is built, I can start putting up the joists. I started with a joist right in the center where the post is just to help define the distance across. I was remarkably successful in 
centering this beam, the distances, the measurements of these joists didn't fluctuate at all, and they were virtually identical um, from this side to the other side. But other than that, the process is the same. I'll lay them all loose initially and then come back and secure them at the rim first and then secure the joist hangers. The other thing I will do on the entire subfloor that I haven't done yet is, even though code doesn't require it uh, or engineering doesn't require it, I will put, be, be putting blocking uh, at the middle point of all of the joists uh, to add a little stiffness, but it also allows me to flex the center of those joists to make sure that wherever the sheathing lands it's it's going to land exactly in the middle of a joist run and so that i have uh, you know three quarters of an inch on either side to, to nail the sheathing to and the other thing i will be doing is identifying the locations of all the interior walls directly above this floor so we're actually in the bedroom suite now uh, so everything above me will be in the bedroom suite and there are uh, interior walls like the closet and the bathroom and things like that and wherever those interior walls land i'm going to put uh, additional blocking in that entire joist run so that there is support for the uh, bottom plate of those interior walls because you don't want interior walls to land between a joist space uh, to cause uh, unnecessary tension on the subfloor sheathing itself and so now I'm coming back and adding carriage bolts to the beam. I did this on the other side. By doing this, it just eliminates really the possibility for the beam to delaminate or to, to swell. I want to do this before I get the other joists in because if there is any movement whatsoever, uh, it'll happen now. Uh, and that'll determine you know the measurements on the joists. But as I said earlier, uh, the, the measurements on all of these joists were virtually identical on both sides and, and across the whole way. So the beam is centered really nicely in the space. I actually ran out of 2x12 lumber, so I had to stop uh, before I was completely finished, um, but it also just gave me uh, an opportunity to buy some additional wood that I needed to complete the stairwell pocket, and I will also be framing out the doors, doorways in the basement itself, uh, the idea being that once, I'm, once I have a subfloor on and I have doors in the back, I've got a secure location here. So that's where I'm at for now. Thanks a lot, and see you next time.